Hiya, so it's game pie time and um, we've made our pastry, it's, um, it's been in the, um, the fridge for uh, over, just over an hour. Um, so now we're going to crack on and make the pie mix and get it in the oven and get eating it. Um, so what I'm going to do now is um, I'm just going to show you the ingredients um, that we'll be using. <clears throat> so the ingredients that we're going to need. Right, starting with this here, I've just got this um, zip tie bag with some flour, um, seasoned flour, salt and pepper in there. Um, then on some meats, we've got um, some pancetta, um, some hair. This one is uh, pheasant and partridge, and then we've got some rabbit as well. It's quite a lot of meat because I'm going to make um, a few pies. Kev, if you watch this mate, your dad's going to get his pie that I've been promising him for ages out of this little lot. So never fear, it's on its way. Um, as well as that, we have got some, um, these I like sh shiitake mushrooms. Um, you can use any mushrooms you like, just normal mushrooms. I like sh shiitake ones. I can't say it though. <laughs> Um, we've then got our um, squashed garlic. There's three cloves in there. Okay. We've then got what people would call aromatic vegetables. These are the base for um, a lot of sauces. So what you've got here is we've got two chopped large onions. You can do them roughly chopped. It doesn't matter. We've then got um, three large carrots diced. And then we've got um, two sticks of celery, okay, salt and pepper, um, some chicken stock. I usually like to make my own um, stock out of all the carcasses and a bit of veg and stuff. And I was going to make a video out of it, but I had a bit of an accident with some of the ingredients yesterday and so I couldn't use it. So um, I will put a game stock video on, but unfortunately this time I can't use my game stock, so I'm gutted. Um, so also we've got Dijon mustard, cranberry sauce, uh, red wine and port. So that's all the stuff that you're going to need for this pie. So. What we're going to do first is we're going to flour the meat, we'll um, seal the um, pancetta and the meat off. What we're going to do is we're not going to cook it all the way through, we're just going to seal it off, take it off, and then we're going to cook some more ingredients and then we're going to add the meat back to it later. Okay, so here we go. Okay, so forgive the audio, um, I am trying to get it sorted out, it's just a bit of a struggle at the minute, but I will get there. Um, it doesn't help, it's blowing a gale outside. Right, so, what, uh, what we're going to do first is we're going to open our zip bag with the flour in and we're going to put all the meat apart from the pancetta in. The pancetta doesn't go in, okay? And then we're going to get ready to fry it. Okay, so that's our floured meat. Okay, so I've got a pan on here, they've got some, some hot oil in it. It's, it's in a kind of medium to high heat but not necessarily on, on, on high. So we're going to um, seal off this meat. So I've got a lot of meat here. It's a big, big old pan as well, but I'm making um, a lot of pies. So um, we're going to just put a little bit in at a time. The reason that um, I uh, uh, flour the meat is because um, it's, uh, it, help, well, it helps seal it a little bit, but uh, it, can, it helps thicken the sauce up as well. So we're going to start frying this off now. I'm not going to be able to do it all in one go because um, there's just too much, even though this is a big, a big old pan. Oops. So we can do it on both sides until it's kind of just taking on a little bit of colour. Okay, so I'm going to keep doing this until the whole lot's done. Okay. Okay. So. Ooh. 
I've got all the meat now sealed off. Lovely kind of golden colour on it. Um, and I'm now going to put the um, the aromatic vegetables in here, which is the carrots, the celery, and the onions. Um, I have to say, this pan is absolutely brilliant. It's uh, it's actually a paella pan. It was donated to me by uh, Mr. and Mrs. Overton, so you know who you are. Thank you very much. It's coming really handy, you little tinkers. Right. Okay, so to, into this pan, we're going to put the carrots, the onions, and the celery. Okay, I've turned the um, pan down a little bit. And. A really good stir. This is going to take on all the meat juices that's in this oil as well. So it'll probably get a bit more now, I think. That's not burnt on the bottom, it's just caught a little bit, but that's fine because we'll get that off. All that's to the flame. Okay, so. Okay, so um, I'm going to just keep frying these off until they're transparent. Okay, these are halfway transparent now, so I'm now going to add the uh, pancetta. Pancetta going in. And turn the heat back up. And uh, carry on cooking until it's all it's all uh, it's all cooked. Okay, I'll come back when it is. Okay, right. So the um, the pancetta is cooked. Um, the veggies take on a little bit of colour. Um, I'm now going to turn the heat down. And I'm going to add the garlic. Okay, the reason um, I didn't add that in the first place is because it's quite easy to burn garlic and um, we don't want it in there cooking too long, frying, because it will turn bitter. So I'm just going to give that a mix up now. So it's getting, the, the garlic's going to get a little bit of a fry, um, but we're not, uh, we're not going to catch it or anything because we don't want it to turn bitter. Okay. It doesn't take long for it to cook at all, so that's garlic's nearly cooked now actually. So, into this mixture, we're going to put, which I've forgotten to chop up, no, I'm going to leave it until the end, tell you what, so, into this mixture, I'm going to put roughly two glasses of wine. Red wine. Okay. So I'll turn the heat down slightly. So, yeah, roughly half, uh, two, two, two glasses of red wine. Okay, let's stir around. This will bring all the sort of um, sediment off the bottom. Um, all those lovely flavours of the meat are all going to come up. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it up and I'm going to uh, reduce the wine that's in the pan by half. Whoops, that was a good catch. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we've reduced our wine by half. You can see it's um, barely any in there at all. Um, so now, what I'm going to do is add got rosemary, thyme, sage, um, bay leaves, and approximately ten juniper berries. Okay, so that's all going to go in. So 
well as that, we're going to have the shiitake uh, mushrooms or whatever mushrooms you want to put in it, chopped up. We're going to put about, I don't know, two shots of pork. My shots. <laughs> Give that a stir up. Smelling amazing. Okay, and then two that. We're going to add our chicken stock. So the sauce looks a bit thin, but we're gonna we're gonna bring it back up to the boil, um, and when we add the meat, the flour off the meat will thicken the sauce up anyway. So we're just gonna bring that back up to the boil, and then I'll be back with you. Okay, so um, we've let this reduce down. Um, there's still some sauce in there. What I have done is I've taken the um, the uh, herbs out and the juniper berries because obviously you don't want to leave them in. Um, the juniper berries they, they float to the top so it's easy enough to find them in here. So I've taken that out. Okay. I'm going to add some more ingredients now. So what I've got here is two teaspoons of Dijon mustard, two teaspoons of cranberry sauce and one teaspoon of um, tomato puree. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to these, just give them a mix up and then add that to the sauce. Okay, so I've mixed it with a bit of water. It doesn't really matter how much water you put in to be honest because it will, it will evaporate anyway. Um, putting water in it just helps sort of um, combine it, you don't have like one big blob somewhere. Uh, so that's going to go in now. Stir up. Turn up a little bit. I'll turn it down. If at any point you feel as though you need to add a little bit of water because you want some more liquid or whatever, you can do because you know it, it will always reduce. It doesn't really matter. Um, my recipe is slightly different to other people's. Other people um, they will take out the. Um, aromatic veg um, and strain it off and then make the sauce. Um, to be honest I just like to leave mine in because it just tastes really nice. It seems, seems a bit of a waste to me. But um... Okay so now I'm just going to add some salt and pepper because I've not added any seasoning yet. Let's it, turn it down again actually because otherwise you're not going to be able to see. So really generous amount of um, cracked black pepper if you can get it or if not just any pepper. Really heavy on that. Okay and then good, uh, good few twists of salt going in there as well. So I'm going to combine this up. Okay. Before I put the um, before I put the meat in, I'm just going to test the sauce. Double dipping, but I wouldn't usually do that. It's just um, just because it's only for me. 
me and the family. That's lovely. It's a nice rich sauce. Um, and now I'm going to add probably about four or five tablespoons of water just to give it a bit more sauce. I'm going to whack it up on full again. A few minutes boiling, let this reduce. Uh, and then I'm going to add the meat. Okay, so it's reduced down a little bit. We've still got some sauce there though. Um, so now we're going to add all of our meat. All the juices off the tray in there. You'll see it is quite thick. Um, I will add a little bit of water, but um, not not too much because I want it to be the right consistency for my pies. So. See the flour off the meat will thicken the sauce up anyway, and you'll see that soon. So I'm going to turn the heat back up. I'm going to bring this back up to the boil and then let it simmer, um, probably for about 10 minutes. Okay, so as you can see, it's reduced a little bit. We've given this a simmer for about 10 minutes, and um, the sauce has thickened up. There is still some sauce there, um, and. What we're going to do now is we're going to cool this down because you don't want to put it in your pastry hot because um, it, it, it could make it soggy. Whereas if you cool it down and the pastry cooks at the same time as the, the meat and the sauce, then it gives the pastry time to harden up. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is um, you, you could cool this down and you could, um, you could put it in the fridge overnight if you wanted to and then make your pies tomorrow. Um, I'm making the whole thing today so what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to spread all of this meat and sauce out over a kind of um, tray to, to give it more sort of uh, area um, for the air to get to it and it to cool down okay so I'll be back with you when that's done okay then um, right so with uh, the short crust pastry has now been in the fridge for about an hour probably a little bit longer actually hour and a half maybe so I brought that out um, just to give it sort of um, five ten minutes to um, I know I said we wanted it cold which we do but um, it will just help it um, when, when we're rolling so I'm going to put that aside though <clears throat> in the meantime what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, flour these um, silverwood pork pie dishes okay so, like I say, the bottoms do come out of them. Um, so, what I tend to do first is, if you see, there's one side that's got writing, so there's the silver wood on it, and then the other side is plain. The plain side wants to go, plain side wants to face up, because you don't want to get uh, all stuff in the writing. Okay, so, what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to butter the bottom of these. Don't want to be too heavy, just a, just a little bit. Okay. So, like that, yep. Yeah. I've missed a bit there. Okay, so just grease them like that. What I forgot to mention earlier was that you can use the recipe um, that I have made for the um, pastry for any anything really. You could use it for desserts or anything like that. Um, also, uh, you, um, you you could make um, a bit of a, a bit, bit richer pastry by adding adding some eggs into it. You'd probably put a little bit less water in, and you would add some eggs instead. 
um, but which is fine. I like to do that for desserts, um, but for pies, I like to do. Um, I like to just use water. Um, right, so we've got those discs buttered. So now I'm just going to put a little bit of flour over them. Don't matter if you get flour all over the table because I'm going to be rolling it out in a few minutes anyway. So, a bit of a nudge. Okay. So they're all floured, look. Okay. I'm going to put some more in a bit anyway. But, so now we're going to butter the dish. Um, don't put any butter around the bottom there because obviously this disc is going to go back in and that's the disc is going to stick if you put butter on there so we only want it around the sides. Okay so Okay you don't want too much just enough to so that the um, flour sticks. Okay I don't know if you can see that. Okay and same with this one. I'm going to do two of these and then I'm going to do one big pie uh, which is going to be for Kev's dad and uh, and for Michael that um, I go shooting with. They supplied a, a lot of my, my meat actually so thank you to both of you again. Okay so both of them have got butter around them. Now I'm going to put the disc back in Remember, um, right inside, down, and then I'm going to just dip a bit of flour in there and give them a bit of a knock. Make sure it's all coated round inside. And then a light bang on the tabletop. So, what we'll end up with is something that looks like that. Um, I'm going to clean all the all the outside and the top bit um, before I put the pastry in, because otherwise it's um, it just it will catch in the oven. Okay. So I'm going to do the same with this one. Bit of pastry in. And spread it round. Take it out. Give it a light bang. Don't want to take all, all of the um, flour off it. Bit of a bang with that. Again, so we've got two of those. Okay, so all I've done is um, I've just I've not rolled it or anything yet. I've just uh, flattened it out a little bit with my hands into the kind of shape that I want it. Um, I've put a bit of flour on. Don't go mad on the flour because otherwise it will dry your pastry out. Okay, so just get some of the flour on the rolling pin. Um, sorry if I'm teaching you to suck eggs again but um, what's uh, the best way to, to kind of roll paste really is start in the middle and roll out and then roll back rather than you don't want to be going like that because that's when you'll get your kind of hourglass shape. If you, um, if you do it that way, that way, then turn it round I'm going to do it that way then that way from the middle you'll find that you'll, you'll keep the shape that you actually want of, uh, of the pastry. Okay, so I'm just going to, bit of pressure, right, roll, spin it around from the middle again, roll it out, I'm going to go up this way, okay, and that way. Okay, so I'm going to keep rolling this out until it's about three mil thick. Okay, so um, I've rolled the pastry out to about three mil thick. Um, what I'm doing is I'm just um, I'm cutting round on top of the pastry like that the um, pie tin. I'm giving it, you know, like a couple of inches either side uh, to allow for the lid. So. 
got one done. I'm just going to do another. I'll give it. We'll go round, cut it, give it a couple of inches around the top for an overlap. Okay. My apologies about the wind. I don't know if you'll be able to hear it or not, but um, it is really windy outside. Um, and then what I'm doing is I'm um, just basically cutting around uh, a breakfast bowl to make the pastry for the pie tins. Okay, so <clears throat> we've got our two moulds um, with the pastry in. I've overlapped it over the top because we're going to use that to seal it. Okay. Um, We've also got two tops and I've got my pulled down meat. It doesn't look very saucy but once it's cooked it'll be fine. Okay so um, I've got some egg wash here um, and what I've done with the meat is I've just chopped up some fresh parsley and just sprinkled it on top and it'll mix when you're putting it in the pie and um, this is just to give it a, a kind of a nice fresh look as well. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put some meat inside. Don't be, don't be, uh, don't be shy with it. Fill that sucker up. So I've filled it up with the meat mixture. And now I'm just going to um, put a little bit of egg wash around the sides where we're going to seal the top to. Okay, and our top is just going to sit on top, and then we're just going to squeeze all the excess pastry from around the sides and the top together like this okay and then with a pair of scissors I'm just going to cut around the side um, I'm just going to leave an overlap All the way around. Okay, so should end up with something that looks a bit like that. Okay, so I'm going to give that another quick squeeze like that. And then what I'm going to do is I don't know, some of you have probably seen it. And some probably haven't. If you um, if you put your two fingers together like that, and then one like that, and you kind of push, put the pastry in between, and kind of push it like that, it crimps it. So what I'm going to do is press down and up like that, and then just keep working your way around the pie like this. Then we're going to put a couple of holes in the top to allow the uh, steam to just uh, get out. And so that's it. It's going to look a beaut that is. So all we're going to do is egg wash the top, getting in all to the uh, getting in all the nooks and crannies of the. Where they crimped, and this is going to look beautiful. So, okay, don't want too much on. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put that in the oven on gas, uh, gas mark seven 
um, for about 45 minutes. Okay, so I'm going to do the other one now. I'll do the big pie and then I'll come back to you when we're ready to put them in the oven. Okay, so our pies are now out the oven um, and they're all down here. So we'll we'll have a have a little taste of it. Um, I've got a, I've done a pie, um, one of the ones in the pork pie dish uh, with some parsley potatoes and I've done one big pie for Kev's dad so hopefully your dad will enjoy that Kev and then I had some leftover pastry and uh, some other mixture so I made some little kind of um, pasty things with it as well so we'll have a look at that. Okay, cheers. Okay, we're on the hand cam for a second. Um, I'm just finishing off that bottle of wine. Be rude not to. Um, so, this is what the pie comes out like um, in the pork pie moulds. Caught it just in time by the looks of it, but I'm sure it'll taste lovely. But um, some uh, parsley mash. These are the um, pasty things that I made with the leftover. Um, pastry and that is for your dad Kev. Okay let's try some. Okay let's try some of this. Let's cut this. These pies are more than enough for one person. Um, if you've got the bigger pie moulds, the four inch ones that I was on about, um, that would be far too much. Okay so have a look at that. Beautiful. Pastry is just crumbling nicely. Meat cooked through. Just enough sauce. Oh, <laughs> let's try some of this. I made this pie for ages, oh my god. Try a bit of pastry with it as well. <clears throat> what can you say? You've got to try this pie. It's really, really nice. Oh, the meats are amazing. The um, the pastry is crumb just it's absolutely perfect. Oh man. That's love on a plate. Um that's a cheers. Um, it might seem a lot of faffing about to some people that haven't made a uh, game pie before. Believe me, it's really worth it. Um, absolutely lovely. Okay, yeah, so I'm, I'm really chuffed with that. Um, ooh, lovely jubbly. Um, obviously, the um, I couldn't make the pastry all in one uh, all in one video because this one is long enough as it is. Um, so I will put um, a link to the video that I've done of the pastry um, in the descriptions of this video. I'll also add the um, the links where you can find the stuff that the some of the equipment that I showed you at the beginning of the video, the garlic press, um, the potato peeler, it's really little things. Um, but I definitely recommend these pork pie moulds. They come out. They 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 make make your pies absolutely amazing. Um, so, oh, cracking. Mm. Oh, right. Um,
I hope you enjoy this video <clears throat> and I hope that you'll have a go at it. I've, um, I've got a lot more, lots more videos um, to come. I'm going to do one at the end of this week. Um, I'm going to use some um, some pheasant and some some pigeon up and see what we can do with that. So keep uh, keep a look out and um, like and subscribe. Cheers.